Let's go, Lionel! This moment has been 33 years in the waiting. Voltron fans are always looking for the ultimate incarnation of the Five Lion robot. And as you know, since the beginning of our channel here at Retro Blasting, we have always taken time out of our day. We've stopped what we're doing, sort of made a detour to highlight any classic Voltron incarnation that comes out. Uh, and this is the one that everybody's been waiting for. This is the one that all of the mega fans of Voltron and Beast King Go Lion uh, have clamored for, quite honestly. Because, you know, Voltron has this eclectic toy history. You have the original Popey Beast King Go Lion, which we've talked about, uh, that was released in 1981 in Japan, and then it was picked up by uh, Bandai, and then they turned it into the Godaiken Go Lion here in the United States very briefly before it was licensed by World Events Productions, and then it became Voltron when they redubbed it into English, and then Matchbox licensed uh, the robot from uh, Bandai and brought it over here officially under the Voltron banner, and then when they did, it lost all of its weapons, it lost its sword, it's lost everything uh, that, that makes, you know, Go Lion, Go Lion. And then Panache Place came into the mix with the action figure, uh, what we call the plastic lions. They had the hatches on the back and the action figures could go inside. You know, then you had Trend Masters, which resurrected the original Popey slash Matchbox to varying degrees of success. And then you had the uh, Maddie Collector Voltron, which we reviewed uh number of years ago on, on the channel, and that was a subscription-only giant Voltron that harkened back to the Panache place. And then, of course, you have the collector Toynamis that have been out since, I want to say, 2005 or 2006, something like that. They go all the way back to the 20th anniversary uh, for Voltron, uh, and they've come out in various forms. They came out in Diecast, which Melinda reviewed as one of our one of our first videos. They came out in plastic numerous times and and Toynami really they really rode that that mold for for quite a while. You got to remember the whole time that this was going on, especially during the Toynami period. Uh, Bandai was making an amazing line of tribute uh, robots for all the classic Japanese animated uh, Super Sentai and uh, classic Japanese robots, which was called the Soul of Chogokin. And they've been doing this for years, and they've done Soul of Chogokin for, you know, uh, Voltaze V, and they've done Soul of Chogokin for Daltanius, and they've done Soul of Chogokin for Mazinger Z. They've, they've just run the gamut. But they couldn't do Goliath, uh, uh, better known here in, in the United States as Voltron. And the reason they couldn't do that is because uh, it wasn't just Voltron that was still licensed by World Events Productions. It was also Beast King Go Lion. World Events P Productions actually bought Beast King Go Lion and Die Rugger uh, from Toy Animation uh, to clear up all the legal loopholes uh, involved in working on new Voltron projects. Uh, and and Toynami was still really the, the licensee for Voltron uh, products. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now, with the new show out, uh, Legendary Defender, I think that's on Netflix or something, I haven't watched that, um, Playmates Toys has the license for Voltron Toys here in the United States. But somehow, finally, somebody wised up and they said, you know, let's give this to Bondi. I don't know the story behind it. I don't care. Uh, I'm just glad that it happened because... Bandai has, or Bandai, Bandai, they've been trying to get into doing a Beast King Go Lion uh, entry in their Soul of Chogokin series for years. And they've already had the plans drafted up. And I remember seeing sketches quite a few years ago. It was on the Robot Japan forums. Um, and we were all thinking, my God, if they could just make this robot, it would be incredible. And it's here. They finally did it. And as you know, uh, Retro Blasting never does a Voltron review with just one. Um, we've always had two just so that we could have the lions and uh, the robot put together for you. So we have two of the brand new Bandai Soul of Chogokin uh, Beast King Go Lions here. Uh, this really is sort of everything coming full circle. You know, the, the, the whole argument online for years in our generation was that there was never going to be anything that beat the Matchbox slash Popey. Um, the Popey original die-cast Japanese robot was, hands down, 
the best. It was the most accurate. It was the most durable. It was the one that, you know, actually had the weapons. Um, and even as kids, when we didn't have the weapons, we all kind of knew that the Matchbox version was superior, even if it didn't have action figures that could go with it. I, I grew up with the Panache Place, but I always yearned for the Matchbox diecast. And my few friends that had it, I, I coveted, you know, their privilege of owning it. Um, and this really is a faithful update to that, which makes sense because, you know, uh, Bandai is, is the inheritor of Popey and they don't make crap. They make, they are the masters of, of Japanese robots. The big question is, is this everything we've always wanted in a Voltron? Is this everything we've been looking for in a Beast King Go Lion uh, Chogokin? And I have to say, if this isn't everything we've been looking for, then our bucket list is impossible to meet. Uh, not because this doesn't have any drawbacks, and I'll get into that in a minute, but if you're talking about trying to uh, get around the limitations of the original Popey, which was, wasn't very poseable. The lions were, you know, die cast bricks. They looked great, but only in like one pose. They couldn't really do much. Uh, you know, the, the robot itself couldn't do much. The, the posability of the robot was much like a vintage Star Wars action figure. That was about all it could do when it was combined. If you're talking about it from that perspective, then, you know, uh, Bandai has made some great strides in that while staying faithful to the original design. Um, and I'll, I'll go into some of that. The lions, for example, have always been problematic in this design. You know, the, the black lion, it doesn't matter what version you're talking about, whether you're talking Popey, Panache Place, uh, Batty Collector, Toynami, the, the, the black lion always ends up being sort of chunky and out of proportion because the black line has to become the torso or the body of the robot and i think here they've really made a good compromise they've they've found a way to make that lion look like a lion when it's a lion without making it look too diminutive and also make it you know so that the proportions are perfect when it's in robot mode the head is not too big in robot mode it doesn't look like he's wearing a huge lion hat like some of the uh, previous incarnations have done. They all have the correct shapes to their bodies. They all have, you know, posable joints. They all have, uh, you know, the pop-up cannons and even molded missiles and guns in their mouths. They have posable tails, which is a first. They don't just have tails that flip out. Each tail has kind of a, a ball joint thing going on with it. And you can really, you know, put the tails in different positions as well as, you know, the arms and legs, the, the, the haunches uh, of the lions and the shoulders actually pivot so that you can get some more dynamic poses. Only the smaller lions, the red and green lions, don't have the ratcheting joints, but the other lions all have a good number of ratcheting joints in, in their legs. And the best part is, is that the die cast is so prevalent in this, in this set. There is plenty of metal in all of these lions, just like the original Popey. And that's key because you don't just want something that's, you know, accurate at a glance. You also want something that feels substantive. And these lions really do. Uh, you know, Bandai has really outdone themselves in this regard because you finally have lions that can pivot at the waist and they can spread out their stances a lot better. And the lions can finally sit too. Of course, their mouths can open and they, they have extending necks, even for the the uh, red and green lions, they have necks that extend out so that you can get that added look and posability just like they looked in the animation for Beast King Go Lion. Bandai, of course, also made sure to provide us with all the weapons for these lions. So not only do we have all of the lion blades, which have come with some of the previous versions of Voltron, uh, the Panache Place actually had the lion blades, the Maddie Collector had the lion blades, the Toynami 30th anniversary provided the lion blades. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with any of the actual missiles themselves. It seems that, that Bandai has decided not to provide uh, spring-loaded missiles uh, for these, so it really is an adult collector display piece. But to compensate for the lack of missiles, Bandai has actually provided that sort of dual-ended Darth Maul-looking spike sword thing that Voltron has in a few episodes. It's sort of a double-ended uh, blade weapon that he can separate into two pieces. And it's nice to see that for the first time, because we've never had that in any version of the Voltron toy, so that's really cool. We also have removable heads on all four lions for the first time to simulate the four lion attack. 
One of the great things about this Voltron toy as well is that not only do you get a, a hand guard on the sword again, but you also get the entire cross guard pommel and handle properly colored to match the animation. Now this is where uh, the animation accuracy versus uh, sort of the quality of the toy itself has to you know come together because you have people who remember the toy a certain way and you have people who remember the animation a certain way and how do those two marry up? Well, in this case, what they've done is they've decided, well, the blades of the swords are still going to be chrome and the lions are still going to have visible legs when they combine as Voltron because there's, no there's no other feasible way to do that uh, with this design. You can't have legs that just sort of fold up into themselves uh, with this construction. It just There's just no way to do it. Um, but what you get in return is you get a nice marriage of the animation accuracy to the, the Popey nostalgia. They did for the first time make sure that his hips were actually silver colored instead of um, black as is traditional for the Black Lion toys. And the robot looks amazing as well. The robot really looks like he jumped off the pages of one of those pieces of promotional artwork that we're all familiar with from when we were kids. I mean, it really does look like Voltron come to life uh, when he's in robot mode. But the question is, is this the definitive Voltron? Is this the last word in Beast King Go Lion? And that's a really difficult question to answer. I'm going to be honest with you, because we've been on a long journey with this character in toy form, and we've all wanted specific things from this toy that some manufacturers have delivered and others have not, and some have delivered some parts and some have delivered you know, other features. Uh, so it's, it's hard to say that, yes, this is the definitive Voltron for anybody, you know, that's looking to, to jump into Voltron collecting. Um, what I would say is unless you are a vintage hound, unless you just absolutely have to have ground zero of any character's merchandising. And in that case, the only thing for you is an original Popey Beast King Go Lion. There's no other way to go. Not even Matchbox is suitable for somebody with that, with that bend uh, in their collecting. But if you're not that way and you don't have any Voltrons yet in your collection, and maybe you were like me and you wanted the diecast metal one growing up, and you haven't yet gone and, and made the leap into a Matchbox, this is a great option. I mean, this is from the legacy company that, that inherited Popey. Uh, they are still, you know, obviously devoted to the character from his original animation origins, Beast King Go Lion. Uh, they, they have even given you two options for this. The, the, the box comes in a sleeve. The sleeve says Voltron. But when you pull the sleeve off, the permanent box underneath says Go Lion. And then the plaque... For the weapons rack has two options. You get to choose either Voltron or you can choose the original Japanese characters that, that say, you know, Beast King Go Lion, which is what I opted to do. That in and of itself makes it the perfect Popey alternative because it's very difficult to find a mint condition Popey these days. It's very difficult to find one with all the pieces. There's no way to count the number of bootlegs that are out there. And the bootlegs have been made continuously since 1984 or before that uh, in all these countries. And if you look on, you know, webs, uh, YouTube channels like, you know, uh, Rocket Punch Army, uh, you know, Charles over there, he loves collecting Voltron bootlegs and knockoffs uh, from way back in the day. And you can educate yourself very quickly on how many of those were out there in various countries, you know, the Korean versions and the Chinese versions and the Taiwanese versions and the lion bots. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. If you're not careful, you can actually walk into a situation where you think you're buying a Popey and you don't end up getting one. You know, you, you've got to be really educated on this before you start spending money. But this is a no brainer. You can buy this directly from a reputable retailer. It's, it's, you know, it's from Bandai. It's currently being made right now. Uh, right now being uh, January 2017. So if this is, you know, January 2027, sorry, this video is out of date. But in January 2017, you can buy this right now. And it's die cast. It is truly in the heritage of the original Popey. 
Um, the lions, aside from the black lion's head being significantly smaller and him being slimmed down, the other lions look like they could have almost jumped right out of the, the Popey original. Um, the weapons rack is awesome. All the weapons that come with it are properly colored and accurate. But is it definitive? And that's, that's what we have to address if you are a Voltron collector that has multiples like I do. I would say, for me personally, the Popey is the definitive because it's ground zero. However, it's not very poseable. It's very expensive now. And you don't ever want to combine it anymore if you've got an original because of chrome tails and the way it was constructed and, you know, technology having advanced. This one goes together so smoothly. It goes together really well. And even those dreaded uh, tail, uh, tail mounting points from red and green lion into the torso of or into the shoulders of Black Lion, it's not a headache anymore. They click in and then they pop right out. It's not the headache that it was when we were kids and we chipped up Black Lion real bad. Um, this is not that situation. They have re-engineered that from the ground up and it works perfectly. Where it falls short? It falls short when you're talking about the robot itself. Not in the way it looks. Robot looks amazing. I mean, you can just see right here, the robot looks near perfect and he's got great articulation in the legs and he's got you know tons of places where he can turn his head and turn his torso and all that kind of stuff but it's not as posable as it could be especially in the shoulders where you're trying to hold the sword or put the sword in two hands it doesn't work so well uh, you you have to un undo the the uh, black line shoulder latches to try and get things to sort of bow out and then the shoulder latches never seem to lock, so the arms are always making the torso rotate. It's not as dynamic as I was hoping that it would be. Uh, and that's disappointing. Now, maybe it's because I haven't been around the lions enough yet to really figure out how I could get that to work. Um, but I do know that it's, it's not working the way I had hoped I could pose him. Uh, and that's where the Toynami takes over. The 20th and 30th anniversary Toynami Voltrons that were die-cast, um, there are some plastic versions as well, but I'm referring specifically to the die-cast ones, they are somewhat stylized, not to the extent that they're not trying to be the original classic Voltron. It's not like Toynami's recent Ultimate EX, which I wasn't interested in because it's way stylized. It's like, hey, you want to see what Voltron looks like on steroids in a tech science fiction world? This is it. It's like, I don't care about that. The Toynami one really was meant to look great as the robot. Some people think the robot looks too skinny, um, but that provides, that slimness provides him the ability to strike more dynamic poses with the sword. And that's key. Uh, this one, it can strike a few poses. Like it's not limited like the Popey is. I don't want to mis misrepresent it. I mean, it, it is infinitely more poseable than the Popey, um, but in those crucial areas with the blazing sword, uh, you know, with the king sword, it it falls short. It really does. Um, it's not a deal breaker. It's the closest thing we've got to being definitive from a modern perspective. You know, if you're talking about uh, a companion piece to the uh, Miracle Metalworks Vehicle Voltron that I highlighted in the Vehicle Voltron feature a few years ago. If you're talking about a companion piece to that, this is easily that companion piece. It really looks good next to that one. Um, the Toynami one is a little taller, so maybe if you prefer your, your Voltron slightly taller, and it's, I mean slightly taller, but at a glance when they're standing next to one another, you, you really can't tell all that much. Um, I like the way this one looks both as lions and as a robot better, except for sword posing. When it comes to sword posing and only sword posing, the Toynami wins out. But the Toynami doesn't have the accurate sword. The Toynami doesn't have the same kind of look. And so this creates kind of a dilemma for all of us, because if you're a hardcore Voltron collector, um, you know, each one of these versions brings you something different to the table that you have to consider. Um, the Popey is the original. It is, uh, it is Inception. Um, the Matchbox die cast is pure nostalgia, and it's the one 
with the box that we all pined over when we were kids and couldn't afford it uh, because we had no money of our own. And then I also have the Panache Place because that's the one I grew up with and it has the action figures that went inside it. So it was very 80s. It was very much like Star Wars and G.I. Joe style where you had a three and three quarter inch action figure series and they could get in the vehicles and fly around. Not accurate lions, kind of, you know, kind of chintzy looking from certain angles, but I love it because it's, you know, it, it, it's action figure friendly. And then you've got uh, the, the next major release, which would be Toynami, which we've just talked about. You know, it's it it's the most dynamic looking as the robot. Um, it's not so overly stylized that you feel like it's some kind of um, custom interpretation like the Toynami Ultimate EX uh, or anything like that. And then you've got the Maddie Collector, which for all of its drawbacks, what Maddie Collector's version provides you is modern somewhat articulated three and three quarter inch action figures with swappable heads and all that stuff that modern action figure collectors really like. If you're talking about a Voltron that can combine, the Matty Collector has size on its side. It's still the biggest. It can barely stand up, but it's still the biggest. So if you're a hardcore Voltron collector, there's an excuse to have all of these. If you're more casual and you're just looking for one that satisfies your need to have a die-cast robot of Voltron and you don't care about action figures and you don't care about all that other stuff, this is the one to get. Uh, this right now is the one you've got to jump on because it's gorgeous. The lions do all the things our mind's eye wish they had done in the, in the 80s. The robot can do most everything we wished it could have done. And it looks great in both modes, whereas the Toynami really only looks decent as the robot. Um, and only if you have that opinion, some people hate the robot mode on it. Um, it does not look as great, I feel, in the Lions. I think the Lions are not as accurate as they could be. This nails it. If you have any fandom for Voltron and, you, and you, you've been wanting one and you don't have one yet, and you don't want to go spend $1,000 on a rig an original Popey if you can find one, this is it right here. This is it. Um, and I don't, think, I don't think you'll be disappointed one bit um, unless you're just really obsessed with double-handing that sword, in which case you can do it with this robot. You can do it, but it's not as elegant as the Toynami. So consider that. Like, if you don't really want the lions displayed ever and you just want the robot... Take a hard look at the Toynami robot diecast versus the the Sola Chagokin, honestly. Because um, right now, I'm sure there's some people who want to offload their their uh, Toynamis because they want this one instead. Some people aren't, you know, completists. They just upgrade. And then the Toynami one will probably be much more affordable now uh, on eBay in the coming months. So there you go. There's our... Uh, review of the next big classic Voltron. And uh, if you're wondering why we haven't, you know, reviewed the Playmates stuff, uh, it's because that's not a, de a depiction of classic Voltron. That is a new thing. That is a reboot. Um, and it's just modern stuff. And that's not what we're about here at Retro Blasting, uh, for the most part. Um, you'll know what I mean by that in a few videos. So, Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.